Colts training camp has been interesting, to say the least. Running back Jonathan Taylor attended, but did not physically participate. This after he refuted reports that he injured his back during the offseason for tonight's Unfiltered. Derek Schultz joining us to give us a perspective on the drama that's unfolding up in Westfield. How concerned are you, Derek, about his physical ability to practice? I'm not as concerned about that, Phil, as much as I'm concerned about where the Colts and Jonathan Taylor are in this whole situation and have we reached the point of no return as far as their relationship souring. I, I think physically, even with a, a tweaked back or whatever it is, if you take Taylor's word, if you take the team's word, that doesn't seem to be super serious. His ankle got cleaned up in January, so that should be good to go. So just adding up everything that we know, I'm not as worried about the physical limitations with Taylor as I am about, I guess, for lack of a better term, the mental limitations right now for him and, and where his mind is and where the Colts are in their contract dispute. And this has been coming on for some time, as you very well know. They've been going back and forth between him and Jim, Jim Ursay, and then Ursay sends out that tweet late last week basically condemning all running backs who were looking for more money. And we all know that Jonathan Taylor is doing just that. So then apparently they sat down, they spoke, uh, a lot of back and forth there, and then this news comes out. What do you make of all of this? I think that there are some things that are better left unsaid. And while Jim Irsay's comments are defensible, whether you agree with them or disagree with them, I don't think they were productive to the conversation or helpful at all to where the Colts sit with Jonathan Taylor. That said, Phil, this is still an issue that Jonathan Taylor and his agent have created. He is under contract for next year. He doesn't have any leverage. He's coming off an injured season. We're a full season removed from his 2021 All-Pro year. And also the Colts have all the cards as far as they can franchise tag him at the end of next year. They don't have to extend him right now. Maybe this non-football injury list is an option. If this back issue happens somewhere else off the team facility and then his, his salary for 2023 is in danger. So he's just coming at a position without a whole heck of a lot of leverage right now. There are also reports out there that he said he wants to trade. Do you believe those? And if so, are you surprised? Yeah, I, I believe, I, I'm, I mean, I'm surprised that the situation escalated to where we are today. So, yes, I, I'm absolutely surprised that it's come to this point. Uh, I don't think the Colts have any interest in trading him. I don't think the trade market is going to dictate that he's worth trading. I think you're probably looking at, best case scenario, a day two pick. And even if a team gives up a day two pick, so a second or third rounder, they still have to give him an extension. So not only do they have to pay him, which teams aren't doing with running backs right now, but they also have to give up draft capital. I just don't see it happening. I think the most likely scenario is that Jonathan Taylor ends up biting the bullet and playing for the Colts in 2023 because, frankly, Phil, I think that's the only option that he has. If he does play for the Colts in 2023, do you foresee him coming back in 2024? Yeah, good question. And it goes back to what we said earlier about the relationship. It depends on if the relationship is beyond repair. Um, if it is, then he leaves as an unrestricted free agent and goes somewhere else. If it's not, then I think they hammer out the extension that we all thought was coming just a couple of weeks ago. Do you think he gets anywhere near what he wants? There are reports that he wants 16 million. Saquon Barkley just got 11, and I don't think that he's Saquon Barkley. No, he's not going to get Christian McCaffrey money. He's he's not that level. No one's going to pay him that. Not only the Colts, the other 31 NFL teams are not going to pay him that. Uh, I think he's probably looking at settling. If, if he could get 12 or 13 million, I think that helps him save face, and I think that's a, a good deal for the Colts as well. And, and that's originally what I always thought the parameters of the contract would be until, obviously, things got considerably messy over the last week or so. What else are you keeping an eye on? I have about a minute left. Uh, well, Anthony Richardson in the septum issue. I mean, anything that pops up with a quarterback, I don't care if the dude's got a hangnail. Uh, he's the franchise right now, and he needs to be out there and healthy and getting reps. So if this limits him at all, I think that is, uh, that's that's going to be a problem with the Colts, and that's something to keep an eye on. Also, just the rookie class in general, Juju Brents. There are some others that need to come in and not only play right away, but potentially start right away because the Colts are thin at bodies, especially at cornerback. So I think he's another one, a local kid, to uh, keep an eye on. Eric Schultz on top of it all. You're the best, man. Thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thank you.